Hello and welcome to 2012 The Fad. I'll be your host tonight. I'm Charlie Bluehawk. Wanted to chat with you tonight about uh, super waves. In this particular case, you normally think of waves, you think oceans. Well, tonight I'd like you to think about the air in the sky above our heads. Because we, all of us here, live at the bottom of a very, very deep ocean of air. And way up above our heads, there are currents and eddies that constantly move around our planet. You know, a breeze, a wind, you can see the, the seasons change, the weather change, the clouds moving in and out. Well, quite a lot of these currents and eddies, they, there are a lot of them, and they move very, very fast. Now, we've all heard of something called the jet stream. It's basically a tunnel of air, a current of air, that moves through the sky. And that sometimes uh, jetliners are very lucky because when they can catch a ride inside of a jet stream, if it's going the right way, they cut their travel time down to half. You know, again, if it's going in the right direction. If it's going in the wrong direction, you've got severe problems. You're basically fighting a moving wall of concrete in a plane. So pilots have to go up, they got to go down, they got to go left, they got to go right, they have to get out of that stream, or they're just not going to get anywhere. These currents of air move at about 600 miles an hour, roughly. Now, I don't know about you and me, but that's kind of fast. And I said they're usually very high up in the atmosphere. We don't know unless, of course, we're in the plane. Now, let's think about this. What it would be like if a tunnel of air moving at 600 miles an hour touched the Earth. Now, I mentioned to you yesterday about a wall of water moving at the speed of sound right after our planet, our Earth, flips end for end because the brown dwarf companion star, the dead star, that is the boyfriend of our star, our yellow sun, passes through the plane of our solar system between us and our sun. We're going to flip end for end, basically with a backspin on the eight ball. I mention this because these two events, they have a lot in common. They can both strip the earth bare, bare down to bedrock. And guess what cannot survive either of these events? You and me. Unless, and then of course here the word unless is really important, unless we make preparations today for the event, that is going to happen tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, we got a couple of years, maybe two, three at the outside. The Catholic Church has changed the Gregorian calendar, our calendar, so many times it's kind of hard to know, you know, what date really is today. But the event is coming. It comes every 2,000 years like clockwork, literally clockwork. Oh, and um, did I forget to mention the jet stream? It's been coming down to Earth lately and very frequently. Do you wonder what happens when a gust of wind moving at 600 miles per hour touches the earth? Everything vanishes. It's the God comes to earth with her handful of sandpaper and wipes us all away sort of a thing. So again, if you have any plans for surviving the event, they had better be good ones. So you're dealing with uh, tunnels of air, 600 miles speed, you're dealing with a wall of water, basically a mile high, moving at the speed of sound. So you're either going to be wiped away by the air, you're going to be uh, ground away by the wave, and if you decide to do something silly like uh, uh, burrow a hole in the ground in Ottumwa, Iowa, you're looking at a couple of years worth of a uh, couple hundred feet of water above you, so probably not the greatest idea known to man. You know, for us here at uh, 2012 FAD, we have our plans, and we will survive and we will prosper, among other things, after the event, because none of you will be here. Property values will go down severely. But again, if you would like to survive the event, just let us know. Always happy to chat about the world going on without the human race, or at least without 99.999% of it. But here's some more fun facts you might want to look up. You know, again, please don't take my word for anything because I'm not the brightest guy on the earth. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a practical working guy um, who's been seeing the signs of this since he was like 10 years old and wondering what the hell was wrong with people. Okay, a couple of interesting facts. One, read uh, the books by uh, Dr. Richard Souder, S-A-U-D-E-R. 
about underground cities. You know, what do our masters, the Committee of 300, the Olympians, they call themselves, know that they are not sharing with us? The other fun thing to do is try to find people who've been in the mining business, the people who dig tunnels in the earth. Talk to someone, an old timer, somebody who's been there for at least a dozen years or more, and ask them what it's like to be in the mining business. My bet is they will tell you that they don't actually do a lot of tunneling because they keep finding pre-made tunnels running straight as a razor blade through the surface of the earth. They even find man-made ceramic walls buried in deposits of charcoal millions of years old, and these are thousands of feet beneath the earth's surface. Sort of makes you wonder if maybe someone was here earlier than us and was also hiding from the event. We here at 2012, Thad, we have a plan to survive the event. Do you? And with that, you know, I'm going to wish you all a really good day and keep a good thought.